Breaking Patriots news. The Patriots finally have their offensive coordinator, and it's probably not who you were thinking. The Patriots going with former Browns offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt, not Rams tight ends coach Nick Cayley, like we all thought. The 53-year-old Pelt was Cleveland's OC from 2020 to 2023. Here are some more details about Van Pelt. He was also the Bills offensive coordinator back in 2009. He was their quarterback in the 80s or 90s and early 2000s. He's been in the league as an assistant for 18 straight seasons, played nine seasons as the Bills backup quarterback. All right, let's deep dive this new era of football with Tom E. Curran. Burt Breer from Sports Illustrated is going to be joining us pretty soon. Curran, all three coordinators have been officially announced um, by the Patriots. This one, though, by far the biggest surprise. What is your initial reaction to Alex Van Pelt being named the team's offensive coordinator? I feel better about it. No insult to Nick Cayley. I feel better about it than I would have if it was Nick Cayley. Um, Alex Van Pelt has been a coordinator, as you said, for Cleveland since 2020. He cycled through a number of different quarterbacks, including this year, Joe Flacco, bringing him in off the street. And yes, he's a very experienced quarterback, but you still have to get him up to speed. They cycled through Deshaun Watson down to backup quarterbacks and got them ready to go. Uh, just talked to Phil a little bit, too, as he filled me in on his history, Van Pelt's history. Came up with the Kubiak offense, Gary Kubiak. So that is an offshoot of the West Coast offense because mm -hmm. Kubiak was with Mike Shanahan in Denver. So the Shanahan offense is really a pre precursor to Kyle Shanahan, obviously, and, and all that. And I know earlier in the week when we were talking about Nick Haley and sort of the experience factor, one thing that you and I definitely agreed on was we didn't love the idea that he didn't have any experience as a quarterback's coach. Which, yes. You know, Zach Robinson did. You know, this guy's been a quarterback's coach for Andy Dalton in Cincinnati, Baker Mayfield and Deshaun Watson in Cleveland, and Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. He's also been a running backs coach and an offensive coordinator. So the breadth of experience, I think, is something that's really going to benefit the Patriots. It helps so much to have somebody who can say, Gerard, I got the offense. Gerard, I know what I expect from my offensive line coach. Gerard, I got this with the wide receivers. This isn't working. You do the administrative stuff, the oversight stuff, stick with the defense, sit in on our offensive meetings, because you might not have sat in <laughs> on a lot of offensive meetings so far, Gerard. And we're going to bring you up to speed on everything you need to be brought up to speed on, because I think it's worth reiterating time and time and time again. 4 and 13 accelerated everything. So Gerard has to learn a lot on the fly. So I, I think that this is, again, the trepidation I had with three rookie coordinators, Trent, is vanquished a bit because he's also 53. And yeah. us, us, us middle aged guys, you know, we can be, we can be good crutches. Well, I mean, I just like the experience factor. Yes. Someone who has seen football in a number of different places and, like you said, has experience. And I know that this is just breaking. So I, I just want to know your inclination as to why all of a sudden this name at the last minute? Like, I think there were 11 coordinators mentioned and named as interviews. And then all of a sudden this guy comes out of nowhere. Did they kind of, you know, knowing the, knowing Gerard and knowing the crafts the way you do, was this sort of their way of, okay, let's put some people out there, but this is the guy we have in our back pocket and we don't no. want anyone else to take us? Like, why was there sort of secretive is uh, the word I'm looking for? I don't know if it was secretive as much as it was so, the, the net was so wide and there were so many fish in it. We kept circling back because I think that we felt as if Nick Cayley would be the individual. When I talked to folks down there, he seemed to be the leading candidate. So... We kind of, I guess, as media, we ignored the fact that it's going to be somebody else. And there were so many names to explore. But I think Alex Van Pelt, you know, his experience and the fact that maybe Elliot Wolf, general manager mm -hmm. de facto, along with Matt Groh right now, would look at him and say, I've worked with him. I like him. And said, this is a personality that'll fit. But I think Albert just wandered in, and he's much more plugged in on league issues. He could probably <laughs> give us better Alex Van Pelt. Yes, FMQB's Burt Breer is here with us now. Burt, you just walked in fresh off a of plane from the Senior Bowl. Uh, yeah. What is your reaction to this news that Alex Van Pelt is going to lead the Patriots offense? I'd echo a lot of what, what Tom said, where if you weren't going to do this in a two pronged way, and that was part of the consideration here, maybe bringing a senior offensive assistant and a younger play caller. Alex Van Pelt makes sense because he has been a play caller before and he can be a resource to your new head coach. And I think there's another element to this that's really important too. And I, I don't think that this should be lost in the whole thing. You know, when you talk to people in Cleveland, they feel like Kevin Stefanski wasn't the one who fired Alex Van Pelt. They feel like the Haslams and Paul DePodesta were the ones that did it because they didn't feel like they were getting enough out of Deshaun Watson. And I know the reaction on that Brown staff they were shocked, 
and they're a little worried right now. And the reason why is because Kevin, if you've been around him, is a little bit more of a flatline personality. Alex Van Pelt was the glue guy on that staff, the guy who was outgoing, the guy who got brought people together, the guy who was kind of the veteran sage, um, you know, like the, 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 the person who unified everybody. And in Gerard Mayo's first year as a head coach, after the year that coaching staff just went, went through, it seems to me like having a guy like that could be really valuable beyond what he just brings to the table from an offensive perspective. Yeah, what does he bring to the table from an offensive perspective? Bert, what do you expect this offense to look like under Al? And I know that there's yeah. a lot of missing pieces, but what type mm -hmm. of offense do you think he'll bring? Well, he's been in different types of offenses. That's the thing. You know, and if you want to go back, you look, of course, he was in Buffalo all those years ago um, as a younger coach. And then he was in Green Bay for a bunch of years under Mike McCarthy. And when he went to Cleveland, it was now you're going to be ingratiated into the Kubiak Shanahan style of offense. That's what Kevin Stefanski is running there. And so like he brings a blend of a lot of different things. And look, I know a lot of people were looking this and say, looking at this and saying, get me Zach Robinson off of Sean McVay's staff. Get me Clint Kubiak off of Kyle Shanahan's staff. This guy brings the same offense with him. He has experience in the offense. He's been a coordinator in the offense, which neither Zach Robinson or um, or Clint Kubiak had been. And the other part of it, you're probably not going to lose him after a year or two. Like, I, I don't think people are going to be knocking down Alex Van Pelt's door to become a head coach. So there's a better chance that this guy could be here for four, five, six years than if you hired one of the younger guys. Hey, Bert, with him being dismissed in January, I just cited the fact that they cycled through a number of different quarterbacks and Deshaun Watson and yep. Joe Flacco and the people in between. Why are you able to ascertain as to why would they have fired him you said it was perplexing yeah. anyway but what was the reasoning is it a Deshaun Watson Desha fit? yeah I mean I think that that's it Tom you know and, and really the way things work in that organization the front office does have power Paul DePodesta is you know I when these things happen a lot of people do point to Paul DePodesta being behind them um, look it's the investment in the quarterback they do not feel like they've gotten enough out of Deshaun Watson now the flip side of that argument would be well, all right, so Deshaun Watson didn't play great, but they won with four different quarterbacks this year on offense. They won with their fourth and fifth tackles. They won without Nick Chubb. Like, you look at the circumstances there, and that's why I think so many guys in that coaching staff were blown away when they cleaned out coaches on that side of the ball, and Alex being obviously at the top of the food chain there. It's like, what more did you want him to do given the circumstances? Most teams get down to their fourth and five, fifth tackles, and we saw it at times here. The offensive line crumbles. It didn't in Cleveland. You get to your fourth quarterback, a lot of times the season over. It wasn't in Cleveland. And on top of that, they lost probably their most important player on offense over the last four or five years in Nick Chubb. Mm. Um, a lot of people in Cleveland were very, very surprised that that happened. But I think if you ask the people in the senior level that were responsible for it and they were honest with you, they would tell you it's the development of Sean, Deshaun Watson as a Cleveland Brown. You know, we've all tried to sort of figure out who's going to be the decision-making head. This sort of feels like an Elliott Wolf decision. He worked uh, with Alex Van Pelt in Green Bay. These are the two guys who have sort of been sort of marinated somewhere else and come in to, to this role. So, Bert, how involved in this decision do you think Elliott Wolf was? I think Elliott Wolf has influence now in the organization. You know, and the day Gerard Mayo was hired, there were two guys from the front office that Robert Kraft and Jonathan Kraft brought into their office for a meeting. One was Matt Crow, which you'd expect, because he was the director of player personnel last year, and the other was Elliot Wolf. And I, I think Elliot's going to have influence here. And I, I think the other good thing, and one thing I can say, you know, I, I feel comfortable saying now, um, Alex Van Pelt's going to have some power over hiring on the offensive side of the ball, which maybe you didn't give as much power to Bill O'Brien over that last year. So. Alex Van Pelt may have the chance to bring in his own quarterbacks coach, to bring in his own offensive line coach. Um, I think that that can make a big difference, too, when you're trying to put, it, put together a, an offense if you're bringing in guys where you don't need to reteach them what, they're, what, what you're trying to do. Well, guys, I think part of the reason, um, you know, other than the fact that we never heard that they were interviewing Alex <laughs> felt for this job that we're all a little surprised by this is some reporting that came out uh, just over the last 24 hours or so from Boston Sports Journal's Mike Giardi who was down at the Senior Bowl along with Burt. Here's how the league sources describe the Patriots offensive coordinator job. Quote one, their best playmaker is a sixth round Lily Putin? Yeah, that's Lily Gulliver's Putin? Travel. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, where do I sign up? <laughs> Quote two, where do, what does Mayo want them to be? I don't know that anyone knows the answer yet. Quote three, the job looks worse on paper than it did here a year ago when Billy O'Brien took over. Kern, you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Uh, 
I just think the lily put, it's always great when you get the lily put stuff in. <laughs> Gulliver's Travels, Jonathan Swift. It was a cartoon when we were young. Oh. So I, I predate you by about 10 years. Yeah, so. yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, I, I look at all that and I don't have really any quibbles with the unnamed sources and their outside view. Mm -hmm. I think, Albert, you can look at this job and say, wow, what a bounty of riches here. You have the third overall pick, you got a Blake Slate, you can put your imprint on that offense or, oh my God, they only have David Andrews, Ramondre Stevenson, and a third wide receiver. Those mm -hmm. are the only places on their offense they have a guy under contract who you can say, this is a pretty good player. So I, I do understand the hesitancy. I swear, I mean, maybe mm -hmm. I'm a sap, but I feel like this is a really good move with Alex Van Pelt. I, I think, like, if you look at the, you know, attractiveness of the job, of, of course, there's big questions from a personnel standpoint. And I think the biggest problem is you've got – issues at positions where you're either going to have to spend high-end draft capital or a lot of money. Tackle, receiver, quarterback, those are expensive spots to fill. And it's hard if you've got all three, got issues at all three of those spots, it's hard to fix them all in one off season. So it does feel like the offense, where they are right now from a personnel standpoint, this might be a multi off season build. And you know, if you're a young, you know, if you're a young rising coach, and you're looking at it and you're saying, what's going to get me to the head coaching job mm -hmm. quickest? Then maybe you would look at this and say, yeah, I don't want a piece of that. Now, if you're somebody like Alex Van Pelt, where maybe you've settled in and you're a career offensive coordinator, you might look at it a little differently, like Tom said.